8.33 in the morning. You're on the Wake Up Tucson show. This is what you get in three hours. You get the former CIA director. You get a rodeo guy named Ryan Dirt Eater. <laughs> then we go do uh, Food with Rocco, Dramas with Mark Van Buren, Baseball and Football with Mike Fader, and now we're finishing our day with uh, David Morales from Three Sonorans. What's up, sir? Um... Just another another week in TUSD. What can I say? Last time I saw you, you were enjoying amazing barbecue at the Marriott University at our party on Wednesday. That was excellent. It was so good. <laughs> it was. I'm telling you, it was the best 15 bucks you could have ever spent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you um, you uh, you're one of these masochists that like to hang out at TUSD school board meetings. Mm-hmm. And um, this was the last one before the election. Yes. And. Um, you were telling me off air. You've you've reported it on threesonorans dot com a little bit. Um, these these uh, meetings are getting. Is is it weirder? Is that the word I'm looking for? I feel like I'm missing the. the those. There's definitely something that's changed since um, the summer. Uh, they started having these um, because this is when King and Nine started having all these. Uh, you know, they had Palo Verde, Booth Thicket, both are magnet schools. And so what they decided to do, you gotta remember that TUSD hired uh, Stephanie Bow to um, the former executive producer at KVOA to to do media management. So there's these, I call them the Bow Productions, you know, where um, they have a dog and pony show where, uh, I shouldn't say that because they're going to tell me I'm comparing kids to dogs. <laughs> but, you know, they, they have these... these um, I'll say it, it's a dog and pony show. Every, uh, um, <laughs> every meeting begins with a magnet school presentation. And this last one was so ridiculous. I mean... I mean, I don't think this belongs at a board meeting, but they were literally playing a game with the board um, and the kids for like a half an hour or so. There was a lot of parents there. I mean, the parking lot was packed, and um, the room was packed. It was standing room. And some of the parents, they were already frustrated. They were there to speak, and this is the plan. They, they wait them out, and they're so frustrated, they get more frustrated, and then they just end up leaving before they, you know, go crazy in there and... You know the the discussion, the the, the votes didn't take place till like eight or nine at night, and the meeting starts at five. So it's, it's ridiculous. This is again, this is something they have learned from the old, um, the uh, th- they've learned the um, the Chuck Huckleberry way, uh, how they do things at Pima County. When there's enough people that they know are going to complain about something, mm-hmm. they all get there at nine. They might take off from work to show up at a nine o'clock on a Tuesday meeting, mm-hmm. and then they can switch the agendas around. That the one that all the pissed off people for is now three hours later. They wait them all out. Mm-hmm. They got to go back to work because they can't stand there all day, and then they don't have to listen to your crap. Well, and the other fact. <laughs> You know, that's exactly what they did, actually. They did switch around the agenda items. And um, some of the parents from Utterback, um, you know, one of them has young twins. And, um, you know, she has the oldest daughter watching the, the, the kids. And, you know, Utterback is on the east side and they're on the south side. And, you know, just everything that TUSD's done has been to to silence the any opposition. You know, here the buses don't run. How are you going to get there if you don't have um, a car? And, you, you know, especially if you live far on the, on the south side. So... You, you know, they don't want to hear, but the people that did stay and speak, you know, they still had a powerful message. And we had a meeting just yesterday at Utterback, and everyone was there. I mean, I was wondering, you know, from the teacher to Stephanie Bow to the assistant superintendents. And I think, I think, um, we got them in a sore spot, and they can't hide from this one. So I see on threesonorans.com it says HT puts a halt to help at Utterback, another TOSD crony. What does what does that mean? So um, so there was two news stories on on Utterback this, and if you guys don't know, Utterback is a middle school. You've probably never driven by it because it's kind of tucked into there's like a triangle where the 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 rail rail yard is, and you know Kino and then Aho. Like there's no reason to go in there unless you need to go in there. The food bank is in there. Sure. So um, this is basically. Country Club north of Ajo? Um, north of Ajo, yeah, and south of the railroad tracks. So, okay. You know, it's it's a it's a weird corner where you never drive by. Um, and um, so they they're having like the worst um, uh, this is a bad analogy, but they're kinda like the Haiti of, of T U S D. They're <laughs> they're really neglected. They're you know, there's a, there's this rich, you know, continent and they're just neglected there. And they've actually called themselves, they're saying, like, we're an island with an SOS sign, and uh, no one listens to us at 1010. So they've been, um, 
you know, the parents have organized and they, they've they been making their voices known. KVOA and, and KGA9 had stories. I know you actually played one of them, I think, on Tuesday. Yeah. And um, so um, in response, on Tuesday, the, the TUSD had the director of middle schools who – he came on and he was, it was just so pathetic. It was like, I want to thank you so much because the parents have given us, you know, hope. And, and, you know, instead of like talking about the problems, he was just like, um, whitewashing it. Sure. And then they appointed this guy, um, Damond Holt. He says, this is going to be my parent liaison. And then so the parents are like, who is this guy? Never, I don't know this guy. And it turns out he's a donor to Crystal Foster. He's worked with, uh, HT Sanchez putting together the Bullion Forum. He's, um, he's new to Tucson. And, I mean, even then, they still have cronyism. They still have, you know, why not have one of the parents that, that spoke up? There's a group that's loyal, that they show up all the time. Not even not even discussing it with them, who the parent liaison should be. And at the meeting yesterday, he was there, and he introduced himself as he's a pastor of a nearby church. Right. He did not introduce himself as a parent of, of other back students, so... So even then, you know, the, the, the parents gonna come and say, Oh, everything's great, everything's wonderful, I don't know what the problem is. And the parents are still mad. They were there yesterday. It was another meeting where the you know, the administrators talked for thirty minutes, forty five minutes before the parents could speak at a parent conference. So, you know, damage control major. Now, uh one of the folks that showed up at this meeting at mm-hmm. um was a lady who is visiting Tucson. I guess she's taking care of a relative, mm-hmm. right? And she's a school board member of another <clears throat> of a place in Indiana. Yeah, it was a crazy story. So the 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 dog and pony show that at the beginning was so long that they decided to take a recess after it. And I was sitting in the front row, and I had my my stop TUSD board bullying, and I have some quotes on my back. And um, right. she comes up and she's just reading them, and she's like, "Oh, I, you know, I think this is interesting." And then she sits actually behind me, and she says. I'm from Indiana, and um, very nice lady, Gwendolyn, and um, uh, she, uh, her father just passed away a, a week or two ago, and so she's in town, and she's like, I saw these signs everywhere, and I think it's actually true, like, I was driving on the road, and I think 95% of signs are TUSD related, and she says, I looked into it, because I'm a school board member, and I was, like, appalled by what I saw, so I said, I have to go check this out, and she was there, and... and um, she was texting one of her co- her board cohorts at, in Indiana, and she was like saying, "This is what's going on here." And then she would respond saying, "How can this happen? Don't they have a strong teachers union? You know, this can't happen." Now I was telling her like the teachers union here is I call it the weak T, uh, Jason <laughs> Freed, and um, and then so finally she decided to speak, you know, and just out of nowhere, and she just like, "Shame on you, you know, shame on you." And then she pointed at, at, at HT scientists and said, "Shame on you! You can't even lift your head and look at me while I speak." And, you know, HT looked up really quick, and then he looked back down again. And um, and she just went off on them. She was like, this, you know, this is what we do, and this is successful. Now I know what not to do. And, you know, she just shamed the board. And it was great because she was an outside observer. So it gave us kind of hope that, um, you know, what we're doing, the fight that we're fighting is, is, is right because people from the outside can see, you know, that it's it's just. well it is a bizarro alternative universe right now Very. so we had hicks on earlier this week and he has the ht goals mm-hmm. right which he's now presenting in the middle of a school year which is interesting at the same time and they're basically ones that he writes for himself mm-hmm and they're so very – a few of them have some sort of we can empirically figure out whether or not he hit those goals. But a lot of them are so openly ended questions and that there is no number that you can even – it's so generally uh, phrased. And then at the end, he gets to decide whether or not he hit those numbers to hit the taxpayer again for more bonuses. Yeah, some of them are ridiculous, like, um, you know, increase – a, pro, promote a culture of safety, or you know, I, I don't remember them off the top of my head, but there was right. ten of them, and one of them mentioned finally the deseg order, but it had, it was kind of irrelevant because the, he just said I'm not going to spend more money fighting it unless the board wants to, <laughs> but he never said I'm going to implement the the USP. I'm going to my goal is to get off, you know, to get on unitary status. He said nothing like that. So, um, actually, he got in, kind of in trouble for it because I think the board. Um, the board started checking him, and I think HT is now very. They now realize that they're looking bad out there. 
Yeah. And so this gave me hope. Um, usually when I speak, I, I kind of yell at them and I get mad. But this time I was very calm because I, I knew that the tide was turning and they knew that they were in trouble. And, you know, H.T. Sanchez couldn't, he was stumbling the whole night. He couldn't even, like, pronounce um, Spanish surnames and, um, you know, just visibly because if either one of Cam or Crystal loses, um, he's probably gone. And so there's a good chance that that might happen. So his job might soon be gone, and a lot of people's jobs might soon be gone. One thing I want to touch on real quick, you were you were sending me some messages when we were talking about Utterback, mm-hmm. and it was about um, the idea that the uh, the director of middle school said that we have all the teachers, quote, full-time teachers and or long-term substitutes that we need at Utterback. Mm-hmm. And then you sent me something about how they converted all the subs to long-term subs. Mm-hmm. When did that happen? So, yeah, this was very disturbing. Um, you can meet this guy on, K- on the KVOA story on Monday. Um, he's the director of middle schools, and he was there speaking um, also at the board meeting. And so in the, the KVOA thing, he said, you know, we have no more vacancies and and we he also said um we've spent all the magnet school mo- money properly so what they did was they had a bunch of vacancies and and you got to remember so there's a deseg order but there's five schools in particular that are focused on and utterback is one of them cuz they're in really bad shape the the federal court last year said you have until november 1st of 2015 last year to fill all the vacancies to and to do a lot of other stuff Right. Because they're getting extra money. You know, TUSD gets $63 million a year to deal with this. They should be focusing it on these schools, pampering them back to health so that they can compete with the other schools and, and be healthy again. But instead, they get neglected. All the money that's supposed to go to them just disappears. So they had these vacancies, which is a violation of the court order. And so what they did was they simply converted the subs to long-term subs on Monday. And boom, no more vacancies. But the same exact teachers are in the classroom that aren't certified. But, the, you know, this has to do with, you know, the numbers, the numbers games that they always play. Nothing has changed, and yet they had 100% improvement just because they changed the classification of the subs. So doing a little paperwork shuffle. Yeah, and then so yesterday at the Utterback meeting, I asked them, because everyone was there from Abel Morado to you, the, the, the principals to everyone, and I said, okay, you guys said you spent, they, had, they got $50,000 extra in, in magnet school monies. How was it spent? And they were silent. I said, you guys spent it. What did you spend it on? You know, just at least a rough estimate. They could not answer the question. They said, well, we'll get you a budget request. I said, I've had a budget request for three months, and no one can tell me where that money was spent. The truth is, I don't think it was spent there. You know, it it was, this is the problem with the DSEG. This is why we have a special master now, because there's so many shenanigans that the TUSD is playing with the money. $63 million is a lot of money. And it's sad, because these, these people really need it. And they're being ignored. Let's go pay some bills. Seven forty, sorry, eight forty-six in the morning mm-hmm. on the Wake Up Tucson show. If you have a question for myself or D. A. Morales from threesonorans.com, Hit us right now. Seven nine zero twenty forty. We're going to talk about uh, how Cam and uh, Crystal are freaking out over there on this TUSD election a little bit, and why it's absolutely imperative that if you live in TUSD, you cannot return either one of those folks to office. Wake up, Tucson, 1030 Voice. Eight fifty one in the morning. You're on the Wake Up Tucson show, last segment of the week. We're hanging out with David Morales, 3sonorans.com, who's uh, taking over the, on- the online world with uh, hundreds of thousands of hits, mm-hmm. views, what, what was interesting on your Facebook page, you mentioned what percentage of your traffic has to do with TUSD. What is that number? I would say it's about 99%. Because <laughs> you know, that's what I write about mostly, right? And I have like 400 and over 400,000 um, YouTube views. I'm approaching 3 million views on my, my blog. So, you know, it's pretty good. It's very good. Uh, now let's talk about... Um, the desperation of the other side right now. Mm-hmm. They don't have much to stand on in relation to real facts and achievements. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of stuff is these weird little generalizations or, you know, like I remember when HT did his little, um, that little info sheet 
mm-hmm. the real facts about TUSD. And there's one where he said he reduced the, the, the cabinet cabinet level salaries have gone down. We well, didn't fire anyone. There's just less people going to the meeting. You know, and I'm sitting there going. Come well, on. he also moved some of them to DSEG, so <laughs> yeah, DSEG's like, paying for it, not him. Like, yeah. come on. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we see that they're trying to start a last minute independent expenditure that's going to, you know, try to go after Stegman or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there going, do you guys have any? Any, do you actually have a leg to stand on in relation to your achievements? Mm-hmm. Uh, w- w- so, so you know, every, whenever you write a argumentative paper, you always want to give the other side like a little. You give them, you give them one that they did well. Mm-hmm. What's what's something that they can stand on that you think they they did well over there? Um, they united the community against them. That's, that's one good thing. <laughs> it's true. I mean, here I am, you know, on conservative radio, and, and um, you know, we're all in agreement that Crystal and Cam have to go. So that's a good thing. It's true because people always say, "Why do you have that David guy in your mm-hmm. show?" And I said, "Because one thing we can agree on is that if Tucson's going to heal itself." This Adelita Grijalva party needs to be broken up because mm-hmm. it's detrimental to the community, it's detrimental to the kids, it's detrimental to the taxpayers. And if Tucson's going to make a comeback here, got to fix this place. Yeah, and schools are not a conservative liberal issue. It's you know, you, all our kids want to go to school, all our kids want good teachers, and that's no, there's no argument there. So we can all agree on that. But this current board is just messing up left and right. Seven nine zero twenty forty. Let's go to Kurt on line two. Kurt, you're on with Chris and Dave Morales. What's up? Good morning, um, David. I wanted to ask you uh, what are some of the things we can agree upon, um, conservative and progressive. I had an interesting uh, occasion here a couple days ago. I was in New York City, spent a day with a grade school friend who is a lesbian activist. She and I uh, differ politically um, like night and day, but one thing that we agreed on is that our education system needs to be fixed in America. So much is central to that. And I was just wondering if you have a philosophy about what needs to change and how we can find agreement. Well, one of the things that motivates me is that I'm a, I'm a college math professor here in town, and um, I get a lot of students from TUSD that um, I teach on the southwest side so I get like you know that part of town um, they tell me the, how they took AP calculus in high school and then they test into you know pre-algebra at Pima and this this is not the way it should be okay, I can see if they had to take calculus again in college but not pre-algebra and so there's a big problem going on so for, for me my mo- one of my motivations is you know Math, I love math. Math is like my passion. I'm a big math nerd. And, you know, like at Utterback, they don't even have a seventh grade math teacher certified. So one thing I, I can agree on, like, first of all, I think getting rid of HT would be good. But I think one thing that we can do immediately is release the Proposition 301 monies that they've been hoarding at the, the you know, at the tune of $20 million. And um, that would be a good start. Kurt, thanks for the call. I got to get the one more seven nine zero twenty forty. Let's go to uh, Luke on line three. Luke, you're on with Chris and Dave Morales. Hold on. Hey, um, there we go. Start again. Start again, Luke. All righty. Yeah, David, how are you going to unseat these two uh, uh, deplorables, if you will, <laughs> uh, if you don't have a united uh, opposition? It's, it seems to me you got four or five people running against them. They're going to split up the vote. And these turkeys are going to get back in. Well, that's something that we discussed a few months ago and trying to have United Front. But, um, you know, everyone has a right to run for office. Well, of course they have the right. But you also have the right, if you're serious, to organize, to say, all right, these are our three candidates. This is who we're going with. Sorry about you guys who want to do it, but it doesn't look like we can support you. The discussions did happen with Lori and Rachel and... They basically, you know, they got their hackles up and said, we're running for office and blah, blah, blah. And they've been warned, you know, if you do this, you increase the chances of these two knuckleheads getting back into office. Mm -hmm. I think think Betts and Brett Rustin have a really good chance of winning. 
And that, well, would, that why would be. Well, we enough. all support them. Mm-hmm. Well, the Tucson Kids First, which is an independent expenditure, has chosen mm-hmm. Mark Stegman and uh, Betts Putnam Hidalgo and uh, Brett Rustan for this. And so hopefully that's coalescing people's brains to vote for those three. Mm-hmm. All right. And that's what I, I just wanted to add my voice to support that, uh, those three. Awesome. Well, Luke, thanks for the call, bud. You bet. Thank you. Have a good day. Seven nine zero twenty forty is the phone number. I guess in the end, what we got to do too before election day, and we can start a little bit. What is what does this thing look like if you can get rid of one of these people? So we release some three hundred one monies to help the teachers. Okay, we we're looking for basics. That's the that's the mm-hmm. sad part about this. We're not looking for miracles. We're looking for basics, right? We're looking for an actual code of discipline that is actually used and utilized throughout Mm -hmm. the entire district, right? We're looking for post the minutes within a month of a meeting happen. Mm -hmm. Go back to giving all the board members monthly financial statements so they know what's going on. Stop playing games with the internal auditor committee, right? Mm -hmm. Stop doing having your buddies and Adelita sit on that thing. Actually make it a true internal auditor and maybe hire someone who is that auditor. What else am I missing, Dave? I think basically what we need is uh, a return of critical thinking to the to the TSD school board, and that is the most dangerous thing I think we have right now, where we have three rubber stamps that are not thinking anymore. They're not questioning. Like every time Cam talks, it's just basically, I want to thank you so much for being so great and wonderful. And you know, we need people to think and say, wait a second, this doesn't make sense. Your numbers don't make sense because they're. They, they're on the same side, but they're not. The board and the administration, you know, the the board is who keeps them in check. And yep. the administration is going to tell you what they want you to know. And so these rubber stamp boards mm-hmm. never are a are never a benefit for your society. Look at the Pima County Board of Soups for mm-hmm. the last 20 years and look at TUSD for the last 12 years. David, we ran out of time. Thanks for being here. Mm-hmm. Thanks for having me. Check out 3sonorans.com. He is the right now number one reporter on any of this TUSD stuff in this town. Wake up, Tucson. The bright side of life. Intelligent Talk 24-7, AM 1030, KVOI, Cortero, Tucson. On the web at KVOI.com.